Hello everyone, I'm Mike from Safe Project. On behalf of Safe Project and our partners from Rise Together, we'd like to welcome you back to our YouTube segment, Rise Resilient. This week's talk is centered on the significance of support networks and connections in maintaining good mental health and avoiding substance use. Today, for the support and connection segment, we will hear from two guests, Sydney and Rana. They'll share information on transformative support from the lens of career professionals, as well as from their personal lived experiences. We'll start with Sydney. Hi, I'm Sydney, and I'm here to talk about um, a transformative experience in my life that particularly relates to emotional intelligence and resilience during a transformative experience in my life, and one um, that particularly focused on a transition that I experienced. Um, so for me, this was in 2018. I was shifting um, out of my master's program. I had just recently graduated, um, and I was in a time of transition, both in um, for the first time in, in, oh gosh, decades, not being a student anymore and shifting into the professional um, realm, also moving states, um, uncovering various aspects of myself. Um, and what I experienced at this time, as I think um, isn't unique to me, is that throughout grad school, I had put many aspects of my mental health and taking care of myself on the back burner so that I could um, focus on what I needed to focus on, which was school, which was my on-campus job, which was everything that was being asked of me at that time. Um, so when I finally graduated is when I realized that I had so much work to do uh, because I hadn't been doing the work as it pertained to taking care of myself and my mental health throughout the two years of my graduate program. And instead I kept telling myself, I'll focus on that. I'll focus on my physical and my mental well-being when I'm done. Um, and for anyone else that's experienced this, um, it often isn't the, it's not the best um, avenue to take. So what I found in this experience, um, and particularly in this transition, is the importance of support, is the importance of connections, um, support and connections, both of professionals and of people in my life that, that loved and cared about me. Um, so the three most important that I found were that of my family, um, that of clinical mental health providers, uh, and that of my peers. So as it pertained to my family, um, I uh, consider myself so incredibly blessed to have a, a really strong support system of my parents and of my siblings. Um, and honestly, a lot of it was just on me to being able and willing to be vulnerable with them and to let them in uh, because they, they wanted to be supportive. They just didn't know how to be if I wasn't able to articulate what was going on for me. Um, so the first one for me was was just my family. And I and I also want to recognize that family comes in many shapes and sizes, um, be it your biological family or the family of your choosing. These people that we let into our lives um, that love us and care about us, they, they can be so incredibly supportive um, if we allow them to be. The second one that I want to focus on is that of clinical mental health providers or, or really this idea of counseling or therapy. Um, so I am a, a really strong believer that all humans benefit from therapy. Um, I think that we go to therapy when we need to work through aspects of our lives and also just to become the best possible version of ourselves. Um, and I found that this was incredibly helpful in kind of developing a greater sense of emotional intelligence in my life, kind of understanding what I was grappling with, what I was experiencing, what I was feeling, and working through that uh, in, a, in a healthy capacity. Um, and I, I found that um, clinical mental health counseling to better understand what I was experiencing was incredibly valuable. So I highly recommend that to folks. Um, and then the third is that of peers. So I think there are so many people that have similar experiences to us. And with that similar experiences, A, it makes us feel um, it reassures us that we are not alone in that experience because for anyone that has experienced challenges with their mental health or um, substance use disorder or substance misuse, often it feels very isolating. And whether it's true or not, we convince ourselves uh, or we feel that we are the only person in our life that knows what that's like. Uh, and because of this, we are reluctant to tell other people or share that experience with other people, which can often be so helpful in kind of seeking the support or getting the support from people. So I found that when I was able and willing to share with peers in my life what I was going through, um, what I was experiencing, what was new for me, I was able to get so much support from them. 
And honestly, what helped the most out of this was hearing other folks in my life that I looked up to a lot, my peers say, Sid, I know exactly what that's like. Or yeah, that same thing happened to me and I've been really struggling with it um, because we know how incredibly detrimental feeling alone can be in our mental health journeys or our substance use journeys. Um, what I found though, is that this vulnerability, vulnerability as humans is not easy, um, but it's incredibly valuable. When we develop that skill to be more vulnerable, to let people in, it is incredibly helpful. Um, be it how challenging it is. So for me during this transitional period um, and really learning to be mindful of and invest in my mental health to focus on myself um, and do a lot of the, the self-work and healing that I needed to do, it was my family, my family of choice and my biological family. Um, it was the clinical mental health support that I am so grateful that I was um, able to have access to. And it was the peers in my life um, who allowed me to be vulnerable, who shared that I was not unique in this experience and that they were there for me um, along the way as I needed them. Support is crucial when it comes to our mental well-being. Let's explore resources that can provide us with the help that we need. Yeah, so for the Rise Resilient series, we're thrilled. We're thrilled to be connecting with youth and young people over the summer and throughout the entire school year, offering information on what a life-fueling connection is. So what's it mean to have a life-fueling connection? What's it mean to have a relationship that makes all of the difference, kind of like what Sydney just defined for her? We know it's important, and but we also know it's not always easy, right? And so we do want to spell out ways in which you might be able to reach out and get some support. The reason we offered information on a personal testimony or personal stories, because we want to make ourselves real. We want to give you a little bit of ourselves. We want to make sure that you know where to go as it relates to personal connections in your community. We also want you to know where else to go from a national level to a state level to community level. So if indeed you or someone you know is in a really crisis situation, a very serious situation, we encourage you to reach out for help immediately by calling the 988 helpline. This is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, and there are trained counselors who are available to answer that call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, offering professional support for you, again, in that crisis situation. If there's a situation where you're doing some research and you're just really trying to figure out where do I go and what do I need? I'm not sure if I need help. I'm not sure what kind of help I might need. I want to outline for you some of the resources that Safe Project has on our website. Safeproject.us offers resources on the I Need Help tab. So it's as simple as, uh, again, safeproject.us clicking on I Need Help tab. From there, there's an outline of resources as I just mentioned, 988 is listed there first. And below that, there are other tabs that you can click. One of them is a Safe Projects Treatment and Family Support Locator. This is a place where you can go and get confidential information from a comprehensive list of substance use uh, and mental health providers by simply typing in your zip code and, and where, where you live and the community with which you live. And you can do this in the privacy of your own home. You can do this with your loved ones and support systems near to you. Again, taking the time it, when you have the time to research and look for what is the best fit for you. In addition to that, we encourage you to reach out to the loved ones in your life. And so whether or not this is a friend, uh, someone who is your age, who you respect and trust, maybe it's another trusted relationship in the form of an adult, a parent, a guardian, and it can even be individuals from your church, your community, uh, from your school. So basically the idea here is that we need you to find a lifeline. When you're rising resilient, you do this together. We're in this together. Safe Project stands for Stop the Addiction Fatality Epidemic. We do this as a team. We do this cohesively together and we're here for you. And we're grateful for the opportunity to be able to connect with you this summer and throughout the school year as you rise resilient in this messaging series. Building connections is essential for our overall well-being. Both Rana and Sydney here touched on the impact of life-fueling connections. Let's further discuss the importance of nurturing meaningful relationships a bit more in our closing time together. Sydney, we'll start with you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So on the topic of additional life-fueling relationships, there's a couple that I want to touch on. Um, the first is, is communities of folks that are interested in similar things. So for me, what was particularly helpful is hiking. I'm a, I'm a big um, fan of nature and I found that incredibly 
helpful in my healing journey. Um, and going on hikes with other people that were in similar places was, was very helpful for me. Touching on what Rana had touched on, finding that support and community in places that we are already occupying. So be it our school. Um, for me, I was uh, lucky that support systems um, and support groups existed on the campus that I was um, going to, um, be it a faith tradition. I know for me in this journey, I, I really explored uh, the tradition of Buddhism and, and what that meant for me. And it was incredibly helpful in kind of being in community with, with folks of a um, similar curiosities. Um, the last thing that I'll touch on is another um, resource that I found particularly helpful, which is NAMI, um, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So you can check out NAMI.org. Um, they're such a powerful national resource. And there's a handful of things, um, ways that folks can get involved that I'll just touch on. Um, the first is, is ways to actually get involved. Um, so for many folks, they find that advocacy can be very helpful um, in their journey of processing a mental health condition or a substance use disorder. Um, and so they have many ways that folks can get involved in their communities, um, walks, conferences, et cetera. Uh, and then one in particular are kind of NAMI support groups. So for many people, and I kind of talk, talk to y'all about um, how important peer support was for me when I was at this particular period in my life. Um, and I also recognize that that's a privilege and it's not accessible to everyone, particularly in rural communities, or um, I know various mental health conditions impact less than 1% of the population. Um, so to find someone with a similar lived experience to that is going to be challenging um, if you're in a small, a small city. Um, so NAMI is able to bring these support groups online who can kind of converse with, build community with, and join support groups of people with a similar lived experience that are going through similar things, um, get insight on what's worked for other people, learn more about emotional intelligence, be part of that community. Um, so I highly recommend, um, you know, seeking support in places that you already occupy, be it school, be it a faith tradition, be it hobbies. Um, and if you're interested in um, in some of these support groups and you're not able to find them in your local community, there are so many ways to do that online. Uh, and NAMI is, is simply one of those. In addition to the uh, excellent ideas, there's so many you mentioned, Sydney, and I, I love that there's so many options for us to rise resilient and to come together. I, I think that, the, again, the importance of having a life feeling connection, literally being an antidote, um, bringing us through some of the toughest times, as well as celebrating some of the most joyous experiences in our lives. One of the things I want to do in closing out is to do a shout out to our partners from Rise Together. So we are doing this series in collaboration or in partnership with them throughout the summer and in the coming school year. We have a We Are Not Alone tour, which is an opportunity for us to come right into your school, into your community, and to share messages of personal lived experiences, as well as not only providing education, but engaging opportunities and ways in which we can load uh, your, your toolbox, give you resources right there for your school and your community so that you can join us in being part of the solution in stopping the addiction fatality epidemic. Check us out again on safeproject.us. In this case, uh, we all rise together. We would love to hear from you and we would love to come visit you and meet you in person and explore this opportunity of life fueling connections together. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you understand the importance of seeking support and building meaningful connections and maintaining good mental health. Remember, finding support and fostering connections can bring a sense of belonging, understanding, and resilience. Reach out, connect, and thrive. Thank you to Sydney and Rana, as well as our partners at Rise Together on this video series. Don't forget to check out our upcoming videos where we'll continue to explore topics related to support and well-being. Thank you.